Hello fellow duelists, my name is Video James, and we're back with another video. So, as you guys know, I'm a Yu-Gi-Oh fan, and as a lot of you may know, a lot of people were unhappy with the previous ban list that just came out. And as the fact that the new ban list just came out today, I decided that I would make a reaction video reacting to said video. But during the recording, for whatever OBS's better judgment is, it decided to not record the audio. So essentially, that whole 22 minute video of me actually reacting to the ban list, gone. No audio, no nothing. So rather than make a second reaction video, quote unquote, and be disingenuous, I decided I would do a discussion video on the new topics in the ban list rather than simply going back and trying to fake and be like, oh, this got banned, I'm amazed. Now, of course, you guys know I never get that enthusiastic, but, you know, there are some people that do go a little overboard with the ban list. So, this ban list just came out today. It came out about two hours ago, as of this point. I think it came out at about 12.30 or so? 12.45? No, actually, hour and 40 minutes ago. It came out at, like, um, it came out at about 1.20. So yeah, that just came out today, and the next one won't be out any sooner than December 15th, which this is going to seemingly be a pattern, because this ban list was supposed to come out no later than September 1st, and it's now September 11th where I am currently. So if that's any indication, then the next ban list will probably be around Christmas time. But with that being said, I'm going to set a couple precedents for what I expected out of this ban list, so... When I when I saw the ban list last time, and when I saw a couple YouTubers' reactions to said ban list, Simo being one, link in description, I saw that not really much had been changed, and I'm like, okay, I can see some stuff didn't get hit, and I feel like some stuff does need to get hit. I think my two specifics last time were Block Dragon and O-Lion needing to get at least hit in some way, shape, or form. And as the game has kind of advanced a little bit, more physical cards have been coming back into play, and we've been getting more releases, I do feel like there's some cards that have been bumped up that do really need a, hey, this needs to get a ban, or this needs to get a limit, just to kind of power balance it out. So let's take a look at some of those cards, shall we? So the first one that came out was Block Dragon, and this is actually in the ban section, as you can see, first section that we're talking about. and. I'm honestly not really thrilled that it got banned. I'm happy it got power cut because it did need it. It was really broken for Adamatia and it was kind of doing a bit of favors for fossils, but I do feel like it should have at least just been kept a limited because it still provided that deck with a lot of help. So if you don't know, Block Dragon basically, if you use it, to, you have to summon it by banishing three earth monsters from a grave or from your, I believe, field I work. Um, you can special summon it, and when it's sent to the graveyard, it allows you to search three earth rock monsters whose level equal eight from your deck to your hand. And that worked out really well in decks like Anamatia, where all of the tuners equal level eight separately. And you could just link it away into something like Crystron Needle Fiber using a Researcher and a Gallant Granite. So yeah, Block Dragon getting hit. Good call, honestly. I feel like Block Dragon did need to get hit. I do agree with that one. The next two I also really agree with just because Crystron Needle Fiber, and I'll explain a little bit more what I mean by that. So, Needle Fiber. Oh, Needle Fiber, Needle Fiber, Needle Fiber. Such a controversial monster. So, for those of you who have never heard of Needle, fi needle Fiber or know it by the more popular name of Halkifibrax, I'm just kidding, no one calls it that. Um, it is basically a two-link link monster that points down in both corners that only needs one tuner as a specific requirement, and it can be any other monster. It basically lets you special summon any level two or below tuner from your deck when it's synchro summoned, or synchro summoned, link summoned, I'm thinking tuners. And this was used to make a lot of basically first turn, I'm gonna make this unbeatable board and just flood my field with cards like Mecha Phantom Beast O-Lion and Jet Synchron, which, you know, that itself, not the biggest problem. The biggest problem, though, was the way this combo was being used, because rather than be used in decks like actual Mecha Phantom Beast or in actual Synchro decks, 
it was splashed into pretty much every deck imaginable to make combos with stuff like Appaloosa, with stuff like Boral Sword, or Boral of Savage Dragon. Basically just to kind of make it this one combo for every deck that everyone used and kind of shoved in no matter where they could fit it. And it really just, it irked me to see that because it was like, this does nothing for your deck. This just gives you a combo that is overpowered. This is essentially the equivalent of shoving Vert Anaconda and Red Eyes Fusion into a deck just to summon Red Eyes Dragoon. And honestly, it really is that kind of thing that people were just shoving Jet Synchron, Mecha Phantom Beast O Lion, and Needle Fiber into whatever deck they wanted just to have that one overpowered combo that you couldn't really break through. So, them being banned, I actually do really think was a good call. Jet Synchron being banned, I can kind of disagree with in terms of just synchros because synchros they finally had a chance to come back and then we got glow up ball banned which i mean always happens when synchro decks come out but then we get jet synchron banned and it's like you know you're really forcing us back into the yusei style aren't you but yeah these two cards absolutely i feel like getting hit was a good call on konami's part so good job konami and then we also didn't get much else on Band. Actually, we didn't get really anything at all on Band. Pretty much everything else is still same old stuff. Number 16, number 42, number 95. Stuff like Substitute, stuff like the Dragon Rulers, the Firewall Dragon, Nightmare Goblin, Nightmare Mermaid, Summon Sorceress, all that stuff. All that got unbanned, or unbanned, still banned, rather. And not a whole lot really got added. Honestly, V's three cards is the only thing being added to the ban list, but I still feel like they're going to have a good impact. And then we also have the removal of stuff to the limited list, so one of those being Double Iris Magician. Now I have a problem with this, and the problem with this that I have is that Double Iris Magician powers up Red Eyes Dragoon a little bit too much. So if you don't know what it is, it is a level 4, 1500 attack point Pendulum Spellcaster with a Pendulum Scale of 8, whose Pendulum effect is that basically it targets one monster, it gives it a bonus to any damage it gets to where that damage is doubled, and I believe it also gives it an attack boost, I might have to check that. Okay, no, it just gets increased battle damage if it battles on opponent's monster, but still... That really combos off of Red Eyes Dragoon, just because if you know what Red Eyes Dragoon does, if it negates literally anything, you can discard a card to do that negation, and it gains a thousand attack permanently. Now, that's a little broken, in the main sense that it can do that for anything. So if you negate it, if you try to negate its first effect, it can then negate that effect and gain a thousand, and then its second effect will go off dealing the damage to you anyway, and then that pendulum monster will also give it the chance to be like, hey, I'm a 4,000 attack point monster, I'm going to hit you for some damage, and then that damage is also going to be doubled on top of the damage you just took. So honestly, Iris Magician is one monster I really don't like being brought back at this particular time. Limiting it was a good call. Semi-limiting it would have been very bad, but limiting it Good call. The only problem is there are spell cards that can search Pendulum Magicians, so I feel like there's going to be a bit of an issue in that, but I still feel like limiting it was a good call, and though I may not like to see it, I can understand why it's probably bad. And then we didn't really get much else in terms of monsters in Limited. We got Phantom Knights of Rusty Bear Shade back, but then we get to the spells, and the spells are an interesting case for Limited, because... We got Harpy's Feather Duster back, first off. Okay, that's great, thank you. Probably to deal with the Medulce cards that just came out, and a bunch of other Spell and Trap cards that are being a problem lately. But now we also have Called by the Grave. Something that was not on the ban list at all, never been on the ban list, and is now limited. Now the reason I have a problem with this, and it's a very big problem, as we'll see later, is a lot of graveyard monster decks are actually coming back and on top of that hand traps are still a thing hand traps by all the uh, rhyme and reason have not vanished they are still very much apparent and actually are becoming more apparent and matter of fact in the last few duels i've seen i've had like five hand traps dropped on me per duel and it's really just 
they are coming back and they're making it their mission to make sure that they're here to stop stuff like Dragoon, stop some newer stuff, pretty much just to stop whatever they can. So, limiting Cold by the Grave, not only because of hand traps, but also because of the return of, again, graveyard based decks, is a really weird call to me. I mean, I would have agreed with something like semi limited, semi limited. Very rational. I would have believed that for Called by the Grave. But having it not be semi-limit and instead be a limit is a real weird call. Especially since even with stuff like Impermanence, we've never gotten something like that. And then yeah, that was pretty much it for the limited and then semi-limited didn't really change that much either. We got Burning Abyss back, which good thing because Burning Abyss, again, graveyard based deck, they were going to make a comeback during this season anyway. So having them get some other good cards back from being limited, good idea. But then we also have ABC Dragon Buster and Totally Awesome. Now let me explain why I don't like these cards because I really don't like them. I, I really do not like them. And it's essentially the same reason I don't like Dragoon. When you have a card that is this powerful, there's a point where it's like, okay, this needs to get limited, or this needs to get banned, or this needs to at least in some way be effective. Semi-limiting a card doesn't really do anything, you still have two copies of the card, making it very easy to pull, it's a 20, or no, a 10% chance in a 20 card deck, and a 5% chance in a 40 card deck, but as someone who plays a game where there's a lot of 5% chances that go on, 5% can still happen. And it can happen very often. So seeing these cards come back, I'm a little tilted at. I can understand why they needed to come back to kind of counter stuff like Dragoon that's going to be coming out. But I really do feel like that they should have not been semi-limited. Semi-limited is just a little bit too much. I mean, you do have to have them that high to kind of counter Dragoon since Dragoon is unlimited. But at the same time, I really just don't like them being at semi-limited. It honestly gets scares me. And then for the last bit of stuff, the actual last cards on the list, we have Makiura, the Destructor, Tour Guide from the Underworld, Evigishki, Gustraken, Pantheism of the Monarchs, and Sky Striker Mecha, Widow Anchor. Now, if any of you are a fan of Farfa, you will know that he's been calling Widow Anchor coming back to 3 for a long time. But in terms of the stuff that's been unlimited, I don't really have much of a comment. I do have to say that Tour Guide from the Underworld coming back, good call for a lot of, again, graveyard-based decks like Burning Abyss. Like, Burning Abyss is really gonna appreciate Tour Guide. But other than that, I don't really, you know, see any real oomph here. The only real oomph I can see is from Tour Guide from the Underworld, maybe Sky Striker, Widow Anchor. But with Widow Anchor being at semi-limited in the last ban list, it's kind of okay that it's really shifted from limited, or from semi-limited to unbanned. There's not really any kind of difference there. Really. Again, there's not really much difference between a semi-limited and unlimited. So that is all of the cards that got added to the ban list. And now for my actual thoughts on stuff that should have been added. So I know it's not a card that's been out for a long time. I know they had to give the same treatment to Adamatia, but I'm going to say it right now. Red Eyes Dragoon needs to be limited, or at least Red Eyes Fusion. The card is too broken, it's too honestly strong, and in decks like Dark Magician, it can honestly mean pretty much first turn you have the one thing you need to just say, okay, you can't do anything this turn. And I mean, I get it, it was needed at the particular time of its release, and it helped the online scene a little bit, but since then it's had a real power creep come up and it's kind of been okay i've risen to this state of invulnerability now you could argue red eyes fusion being limited would also help this and i agree red eyes fusion being limited would definitely help this because it would mean okay i only get this one red eyes fusion gotta make it count and honestly vert anaconda i can't really say they should ban or affect because even without red eyes fusion it's still got uses like in Shadals, it's still a good card to use there. In Heroes, it's a good card there. In Fright Furs, it has a good card base there. There's a lot of stuff where Anaconda kind of falls into a Needle Viper situation, 
that it's not so much the card itself, but the cards that it supports. And again, Called by the Grave, that's the one that I really disagree with on this list. I really feel like Called by the Grave, limiting it was a bad idea. It should really be brought back up because hand traps are still a thing. There's stuff that sends itself to the graveyard that really is still a problem. And limiting something like Called, but not touching the hand traps is a real problem. And yeah, that's really all I can say for the ban list. Is there stuff I want to be put on and come back off of it? Of course, I want the dragon rulers to come back so that they can at least have some chance to kind of make up for the power creep that's affected them. I would like Jet Synchron to at least come back to limited so that it can be used for Synchro decks and Synchro decks can at least play again. But as it stands with this ban list, I'm satisfied, I'll say. We've dealt with stuff that's currently out and readily available, and once uh, Red Eye Dragoon becomes more spread out and people have more copies of it, I'm sure something will happen with it. But as of right now, I feel like they've dealt with a lot of stuff that's been physical for a while. It's been a problem, and I can really appreciate that. So again, good job, Konami. But with that being said, I'm going to leave this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. There will be links in the description. There'll be a link to the ban list, there'll be a link to the commentary I did on Simo's video, there'll be a link to Simo's video, so you can kind of see what I was talking about with the last ban list, and kind of get more of an idea of what the last ban list kind of looked like. But if you did so happen to like this video, you can go ahead and slap the like button as always, and I will see all you beautiful people in the next video.